At this point in time, I have ColdFusion 10 installed. I have ColdFusion Builder 2 installed. And I also have my files set up within ColdFusion Builder as a new project. Now within my project files, there are two folders that I do not need to have within ColdFusion Builder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. And those are these two here that were contained in my Travel ADV course files. Those are specifically Dreamweaver related files. At one point, I had this website open in Dreamweaver and that's where those two items came from. So I'm going to simply select them by holding Control or Command down and hitting the Delete key on my keyboard. I kept them in there because I want to show you how to delete files from within the navigator, as well as add files, which we'll be doing in a moment. Also within the course files, I do have a folder, and this folder contains PowerPoints, and one of those is the ColdFusion Page Requests PowerPoint. I'll be coming back to that PowerPoint when I explain how ColdFusion pages are put together. So I just want you to know that that's located in here as well. Now that our website is set up, these are pre-built pages that I've created for you. How do you create a brand new page from scratch? You create a new ColdFusion page the same way we created a new ColdFusion project. So I can right click the project folder, go up to new and choose new ColdFusion page. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now just double check and make sure that that location is always in the travel ADV folder. I like to double check that in case it's not. Browse out to that folder within the ColdFusion 10, CFusion, WWW root folder. I'm going to title this, let me say, new page, because that's all it is. I'll click Finish. And as soon as I do that, ColdFusion Builder adds it to my course files and also opens it within the interface. Now up at the top of the ColdFusion Builder interface, you have these four tabs. And those allow you to work in those four types of files. The other thing you have down at the bottom of the interface and I'll just go back to the CFML for now. You also have a Firefox, and because I'm on a Windows system and Internet Explorer was already installed, I also have an Internet Explorer little tab. Now, if I click Firefox, I get this message, and this is ColdFusion Builder asking me, before you preview the file, if you have not saved this file, do you want me to automatically save the file? And I will say yes, that's a handy feature. And you can see my very exciting page. If I click on Internet Explorer, I get the same page. Here's my source file. It's completely blank. Now, as you click these different tabs up here, what it does is allow you to have access to these shortcuts for creating tags. So in the HTML tab, I can insert a form tag just by clicking this button and you can see a form tag goes in. Now I'll just delete that. But JavaScript, it gives you some of the JavaScript features. CSS, same thing. Here's the commenting. I'm going to stay in the CFML for now and I basically have some of the options for Cold Fusion specifically. Now this page has been changed. What I did was I added that form code in HTML and deleted it. So Cold Fusion Builder is registering that this page has been changed with an asterisk right here. So I simply need to do a save of the page. Now if I right click, there are a lot of options available to me, one of which is save. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now that I've saved the page, I do not have an asterisk. 
Now, Cold Fusion Pages have a .cfm extension. You could see Cold Fusion Builder automatically added that for us. That .cfm extension tells the web server to send this page to the Cold Fusion server for processing. And it does that automatically, whether there's Cold Fusion code on the page or not, simply because of this file extension. Now you will hear Cold Fusion Pages referred to as a template page. And technically it's not a template like you think of a template for Word or PowerPoint or whatever other programs you've worked with templates. The reason the word template is used is because Cold Fusion processes the page and basically puts the page together for us. So it's technically a template page until Cold Fusion is done processing that page and goes to send that page back to the web server as pure HTML. And let me move out to this slide to show you that particular process. So the Cold Fusion server, what does it do? It processes the Cold Fusion coding, it communicates with the database, and then it assembles the page once it's done with all of that. So basically when Cold Fusion gets the page request from the web server, Cold Fusion goes through all of the code on the page. If any code needs to be sent to the database to receive information, Cold Fusion does that communication. You communicate with the database through the language of SQL, standing for Structured Query Language. So Cold Fusion makes the database requests, Cold Fusion gets the information back from the database and gathers all of that and assembles the page. So that's why it's technically called a template. It isn't assembled until all of the code comes back to the Cold Fusion server and Cold Fusion puts the page together. Once the page has been put together by Cold Fusion, it gets sent back to the web server and then forwarded back to the user's browser. So when I use the word template, that's what I mean. I'm just referencing the page with the .cfm extension because sometimes those pages that Cold Fusion puts together are actually four or five different pages put together and database information has also been added to that page. So that's why we call it a template. It gets assembled by Cold Fusion and sent back to the server. So that is a Cold Fusion template page simply a page with a .cfm extension that Cold Fusion has processed and sent back to the web server to go to the user's browser.